Hello everyone, welcome to the video on tetracyclines, medicinal chemistry aspects. In this video, I will explain about mechanism of action of tetracyclines, its structure, nomenclature, structure activity relationships and its chemical degradation and the important products and their clinical uses. This is my YouTube channel, just type in my name Jesarajesh, you will get all pharma related videos. Let's get into the topic. Now, tetracyclines, they are derived from streptomyces bacteria. Now, the name tetra is because of four rings fused together. And this is how it looks. One, two, three, four rings are fused together and there are a lot of functional groups are there. Now, their mechanism of action, they will bind to A site of 30S ribosomes. See, bacterial ribosomes are made up of 50S and 30S. In this, you have three different sites are there. Amino acyl sites, peptidyl sites and exit sites. Out of these three sites, tetracyclines go and bind here at 30S ribosome A site. Once they bind there, what they do is they inhibit binding of tRNA to mRNA ribosome complex and that inhibits protein synthesis. So tetracyclines, the major mechanism of action is they inhibit protein synthesis. They cause bacteriostatic action. Remember, they cannot kill the bacteria, but they stop the growth of bacteria. Hence, they are called as bacteriostats. Now, the other important aspects, if you see the ring, it has got a lot of functional groups are there, especially in this combination. What happens is, so it has got two adjacent oxygen atoms with lone pair of electron availability. Because of this lone pair of electron availability, ions like calcium can chelate with this oxygen atom and form a complex. So, multivalent ions will form chelated products with tetracyclines which will not get absorbed. That is the reason why tetracyclines should not be taken along with dairy products which contains calcium or antacids like aluminum hydroxide gel or magnesium hydroxide which contains these positive ions which can chelate with these oxygens. So, this is what is the some of the chemical aspects of tetracyclines. Now, when you see the structures, as we have seen, it is made up of four rings and this is a derivative of this ring. This is called as naphthacene or it is also known as tetracene. So, the basic uh, uh, tetracycline ring with all the functional groups looks like this. As I told you, it has got a lot of functional groups are there. Uh, we will see when we see about nomenclature. Now, look at them. This is how it looks. See, the numbering starts from here. This keto group gets the first number 1 2 3 4 and the ring junctions are known as 4a 5a 6a kind of thing 7 8 9 10 10 a 11 a now you need to understand certain things look at this tetracyclines are a derivative of this naphthacene the unsaturation is present in only d ring the remain unsaturated bonds are replaced with hydrogens how many bonds are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 bonds are there Now, out of the six bonds, two bonds in these rings, see, two bonds in these rings are retained here. So, two bonds are retained and one, two, three, four double bonds are replaced with hydrogens. Each bond can be replaced by two hydrogens. So, four double bonds means it will be around, it will be eight hydrogen replacement is there. So, eight hydrogens are replaced with these double bonds with this naphthacene ring. So, See, while writing the nomenclature, you need to understand the substitutions as well as the hydrogen substitution also. Now, let us see one by one. Remember these things. So, at fourth position, you have a dimethyl amino group is there. This is one of the substitution. And as I told you, eight hydrogens replaced in the, in the place of double bond. And you have hydroxy groups are present. And what else is there? Dioxy groups are there. So, while writing the name, you need to mention all these things. Look at them. See, the 4S, 6S, 12S, as I mentioned previously also, first you need to explain about stereochemistry. See, there are asymmetric carbons are there. See, the asymmetric carbon is here. See, 4A, you have asymmetric carbon is also there. 5A is also an asymmetric center. 6, asymmetric center and this one. So, all these are asymmetric center. But out of this asymmetric center, we need to mention the confirmation of 4, 6 and 12 where you have other than hydrogen substitutions are there. So, first you explain about the confirmation at these centers and then at fourth position dimethyl amino group is there and I have already explained you four of these double bonds are replaced with hydrogens. So, you say octahydro 
at what all the positions the hydrogens replaced and then five hydroxy groups are there at third position at sixth position at tenth position at twelfth position and twelve a position all these are penta hydroxy groups and at sixth position you have one more methyl group is there six methyl is there and one and eleven dioxo groups are there see this is one sorry this is one and this is eleven and finally the ring is dioxo naphthacene two carboxamide at second position carboxamide group is there so this is what is the nomenclature of tetracyclines now you need to understand certain things see while writing the substitution you need to follow alphabetical order that's why first you get amino see dimethyl amino so the first substitution you take the concentration of amino and then hydro and then hydroxy and finally methyl so this is what is iupac nomenclature of uh, tetracyclines now in tetracyclines when you see the chemistry you have three different pka zones are there so one zone is highly acidic and this acidity is because of conjugation what happens is after donating this proton the conjugation goes like this so that helps in increasing the acidity now the other zone at pka7 is there which is a little bit less acidic the basic pH is also there at because of this lone pair of electrons at nitrogen. So tetracyclines are kind of amphotric. You have basic nature is there, acidic nature is also there. Now stereochemistry. Let us understand the stereochemistry. As we have seen, it has got all these places stereo centers are there. Look at them. At this fourth carbon, you have a stereo asymmetric carbon is there. At 4A also we have a asymmetric center. 5A asymmetric center and 12A here. This is 12A and sixth carbon. So all this you have totally how many asymmetric carbons are there? One, two, three, four, and five asymmetric carbons are there. Now understand the importance of this asymmetric center. At majority of asymmetric center, this is at alpha conformation, and this alpha conformation is required for activity, and that is what determines its activity. Moving for that structure activity relationship. Now see, as I told you, the alpha conformation of amine is required. So removal of dimethyl amine reduces activity. So in all the tetracyclines, this group is not altered because that reduces activity. Similarly, this carboxamide substitution also reduces activity. You make any change to these groups, it reduces activity, so it has to be present there. Similarly, this keto in a keto ethanol ring is also important for activity. Now at this 4A carbon, the stereochemical configuration of alpha is required. So these things are required and you cannot alter them. So the only place for alteration is at this 7th position. Like 7th position can be substituted with chloro and dimethyl amino group which are electron withdrawing in nature. So that substitution produces chloro tetracycline and minocycline and that, that these drugs have shown activity. So this is what a structure activity relationship is. And these are all the drugs. Now see, in, in the uh, third, three, two medicinal chemistry syllabus, four drugs are mentioned. Chlorotetracycline, oxytetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline. Observe the structures. See, only the difference from tetracycline to chlorotetracycline is at seventh position a chloro substitution is there. That becomes, that's why it has got the name chlorotetracycline. Now the next one is oxytetracycline because a hydroxy substitution is there at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th position. So remaining thing is very similar to tetracycline. Now doxycycline, doxy indicates deoxy. Deoxy means removal of hydroxy group. From where? From here. See in tetracycline you have a hydroxy group and methyl group is there. You remove this oxy group in oxy tetracycline, you will get doxy tetracycline. See this is nothing very similar to oxy tetracycline. Only the difference is you have removed this hydroxy group at this position, it becomes doxy tetracycline. Now, at 6th position, all the substitutions are removed and at 7th position, dimethyl amine is replaced and that is what gives minocycline. So, these are all the four important tetracyclines. Now, chemical degradation. Now, look at them. This is important. Tetracycline can give an epimer form called epitetracycline. Epimer means there is a difference in configuration at only one carbon. At this carbon, look at this. Amine is in alpha conformation here. Here it is beta conformation. And the change in uh, conformation is what results in epimers. Only change in one carbon 
confirmation gives epi met this epi tetracycline is inactive the other thing in presence of acid it may lose water and give n hydro tetracycline n hydro means without water molecule see this hydroxy group and hydrogen here removes and you get a double bond here that is called as n hydro tetracycline this n hydro tetracycline can also convert to another epi mer it is called as epi n hydro tetracycline look at them see epi tetracycline can also lose a water molecule <coughs> and gives epi n hydro tetracycline or n hydro can convert into epi mer and gives epi n hydro tetracycline whatever it is this epi n hydro tetracycline is inactive but this may cause kidney damage and the kidney damage may results in a syndrome called as fanconi syndrome fanconi syndrome so because of the kidney damage reabsorption may not occur so body may be losing phosphates body may lose amino acids and gluco glucose also so this is known as fanconi syndrome usually this happens in expired tetracyclines that is the reason why tetracyclines when they are expired they should they should never be taken and this is the important chemical degradation patterns one is an epimer and the other one is an hydro derivative both of them can also occur and this is the problematic product now understand this one see this n hydro occurs only when there is a hydroxy group present at the sixth position now two of the tetracyclines do not have this hydroxy group at here doxycycline and minocycline so both of them cannot form n hydro form if n hydro form is not there fanconi syndrome will not be there so remember doxycycline minocycline could not form n hydro form because they don't have this hydroxy group to form n hydro n hydro form this hydroxy along with a hydrogen removal results in n hydro tetracyclines and that is not possible in two of the tetracyclines doxycycline and minocycline finally uh, the uh, tetra tetracyclines they are antibiotic that prevent protein synthesis they prevent tRNA from binding now they are broad spectrum antibiotics they can act against rickettsia chlamydia and mycomonospora and many common gram negative and positive will get affected hence it is called as broad spectrum they accumulate in our cells and that may cause a certain damage also now the side effects phototoxicity tinnitus ringing bells in ears teeth staining may be there because tetracycline can combine with calcium in the teeth and that may results in yellow coloration that is called as teeth staining bone growth delay will be there in in growing children tetracyclines may form complex in bone hence they should not be given in young children nephrotoxicity hepatotoxicity are there they are contraindicated in pregnancy breastfeeding and children under 8 because of this problem bone growth and everything so this is about tetracyclines if you like the video do subscribe and share the video